What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we are joined by somebody who is an amazing and super, one of the most super active people. I need to get as active as she is. Uh, amazing, super active young woman. She is not her disability, but she is a 2019 Southwest Florida Special Olympics Female Athlete of the Year. She is a Global Messenger, an athlete, Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools Leadership Committee member, one of 12 Special Olympics U.S. Youth Ambassadors, and a future and current public speaker for talking about it. So while I catch my breath from that long list of accolades, Taja, welcome to Community Voices. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me here. Of course. We appreciate you cutting out time to join us. How, how are you feeling today? I am actually feeling very well today. Like today was pretty amazing. Did a little shopping before I go over to Detroit. So I'm pretty, so I'm feeling really great today. <laughs> good, nice, nice. I hope you have a good time in Detroit. I haven't done too much traveling myself. I'm trying to. Detroit's been the place that I want to go to. I hear so many good things about it, honestly. So I, I got, I hope you have a yeah, good time. That's like what all my friends been telling me about. They're like, you're going to Detroit, have fun. I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now you definitely will, you definitely will. Well, let's get into things. So for those who are, you know, who are new to you and may not be as familiar, tell us a bit about yourself and your story, if you don't mind. Okay. So, so my name is Sahaja Ellera. Um, I was born and raised in Amakali, Florida. It's like a little small town. Um, at a young age, I was going through a really difficult time in my life because at the age of 12, I lost my mother. And at the age of two, I lost my father. Um, my dad really didn't have a really impact on me because I was because I was only two, like what two year old know, oh daddy's not coming home. Right. But when my mom passed away, I think that's when I lost it completely. Um, I just I just wasn't myself. I went into a total depression mode. I tried to take my life multiple times on occasions. And it's be and I feel like the only reason I tried to was because she died three days right after my birthday. Mm -hmm. So so it was pretty rough for me and having a disability on top of it was pretty rough. Like we were always brought and raised up in the church. So I had stirred away from that at the age of 12 as well, because I was not like really counting on God at the time because I was like, bro, like, how could you do something like this to me? Sure. And like, just going throughout my life, it's just always been like that for me, just dealing with being my disability at the time when I was that young, because my mother, she would be the one that would protect me in my older sister Katrina who has a disability from everyone because she knew that people wouldn't accept us for who we were so that was difficult for her so when she passed along it was now it was time for me to step up and be that person that protected me and my sisters and I had no clue on how to do that so mm -hmm. it was pretty rough and I am also a college student um, at Florida Gulf Coast University. I am majoring in speech and communications so I can get that certified public speaker. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. I love it. I love it. And like I said, you know, I, your, your story is, is one of inspiration, but it also, you know, it is one of, you never know what people can relate to and you never, you know, people's story. Right. You know, it's, it's a blessing that you made it through what you made it through when you're here right. today to tell your story and to continue to keep growing because that, I always say this, I said this last time I was um, doing a community voice, we never know who's watching. You know what I mean? It's so important and so impactful. You know, I, I I lost my grandmother a year ago, seven days after my birthday and like two weeks before my wedding. So wow. dealing with that, it is really tough when you lose somebody so close and dealing with it during that time and you don't have to internalize those feelings and emotions, but you have to keep going to the next day. And it's a lot to go through. So like I said, it's 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 I appreciate you telling your story you're strong, you're amazing for, for getting through it and for being what you are today. I know you only have so much more, you have much more going towards your future, but I just wanted to, you know, say I feel with you that and I commend you for, you know, how you got through it. God is good to get you through it too, so. Amen. <laughs> and I had that church, I had that church I'm bringing too, so everything you're talking about, yep, I get it. Oh yeah, and then I am also um a youth pastor. I became a youth pastor in 2019, so yeah. Nice. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's super <laughs> cool. Look at that. I'm, I'm getting inspired already. I'm about to put some junk stuff myself. <laughs> oh, I want to say, you know, I, I just talked about being inspired. Uh, Loretta Claiborne, Special Olympics athlete and chief inspiration, uh, chief chief inspirational officer. Um, she was a big inspiration for you, I believe. And you know, she had a a, a speech and she had spoke with you, and it really like 
kind of gave you that last bit of push, that extra push to just go forward with, with what you were doing. Talk about how um, that meeting, that conversation with her impacted your life. So at first, I like seeing her movie, my teacher, because like I said, I was going through a difficult time. Mm -hmm. And she and she just showed me the movie. And once she showed me the movie, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I want to be Loretta. I want to be just like Loretta. And then it was my birthday. It was coming up to my birthday weekend. Mm -hmm. And all I can remember, like, remember her saying, oh, Tasha, guess who's coming? I'm like, who's coming? And she's like, oh, Loretta, like, Loretta Claiborne will be down Saturday. And I'm like, you're lying don't do that don't do that don't do that so we all so we all hop in the car with my teacher we're going over to like the gym because that's like what a special bit um the special olympics event was going on at mm -hmm. and all i can remember was seeing loretta hop out of a car and i'm like touching everybody i'm like that's not loretta is that loretta and so i go up and i stand behind her for a minute and i'm like okay what like what do I do? What do I do? Like like I'm actually being someone that I look up to. <laughs> and then as soon as she turned around, I just started crying. No, all I remember telling her was Loretta, you inspired me. I want to be like you someday. I want to do everything you're doing, but I want to do it better. I want to make a difference. What do I do? And then all I can remember her telling me is to be yourself. And once she told me that tears started falling again because I didn't know how to be myself at the time mm -hmm. as a person with, with a disability that's how I was thinking how could I be myself like who would ever listen to me like I'm just Tasha I'm I'm not a special person I'm not you but I want to be you how do I get there and right. she was like and, and then she was like everyone wants to be Michael Jordan right I was like heck yeah everybody want to be Michael Jordan they, um, they want to play like him and then she was like but there's only one Michael Jordan and so that means there's only one of you and there's only one of me. You can't beat me. And then and then she and then all I can remember, like I said, was her saying, be yourself. And from there, it's just like I've done everything she's done by being myself, by putting myself out there, by just sharing how much love that I have for the organization. And like just Loretta Claiborne by herself, every time I speak of her, she it gives me chills because like when I looked in her eyes the day I met her, I knew then that the that the that the spirit she had on her was going to enter into me mm. because I wanted it bad and I wanted it to and like me I just wanted to be her and so that so that look that she always gives me is just like you know what Loretta I know I'm making you proud and then she gave me that extra push to just like start mentioning my whole entire life story because mm. I would always get people the shortcut of it oh yeah this like this is like this is what happened blah 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 yeah. i wouldn't go deep into it because it always opened up a spot in me where i'm like man that hurt but then it's like loretta's like you have to be open so she inspired me that much yeah oh i love that yeah and, and she, you know it's, it's true that telling that like you said i said earlier telling that story you know sometimes you know you want to take the shortcut you don't want to re revisit it or relive it but you said never right. know who's that may change something. I may save somebody's life. So exactly. it's when you hear that story to be able to. And also, I think too, when they have learned from like therapy in the past, like it also helps you to to mention that story. Kind of helps like with the scar of it, if you can say like you know to to grow with it, to be better about it, to you know. So it does a lot. So that's, that's really important. That's really good. So I have to ask too. So on top of that, you know, I know that was a big inspiration and really moving you forward, and I, I could tell it motivated you a lot. What um, what else like drew you to the Special Olympics, and how did you kind of first get involved? All right, so it was my middle school year. I was mm -hmm. going through a difficult time, still trying to get over the loss of my mom. And I was just I was just a bad child. I'm just putting it like that. I ain't gonna show nothing. I, I was bad. <laughs> like I would be put in a corner, I would be sent out to the classroom. And like my teacher, her name is Wanda Johnson. Let me tell you, she wasn't having it with me. She wasn't having it. She wasn't dealing with the attitude because she knew already while when, when I was entering what was going on because they put her aside and told her. Mm -hmm. And she knew all this stuff was going on. So she made me stand up and present in front of the class. I had to do a speech. So that's how I first got it started in public speaking was mm -hmm. when she had literally gave me a piece of paper, told me to sit down and write down all my feelings and then stand up and present it. I mean, I love to debate. I'm a debater. <laughs> so I so I kept going back and forth for her. I did not win. I was I was really mad that that I didn't win. And she, she, and like I stood up and I said it in front of the class and I felt some pain go away. Like I'm like I'm so thankful that God put her in my life at that season 
Because mm-hmm. I don't think if it had not been for her believing in me, I don't think I would have made it this far. I really like I really don't. And how I got involved with Special Olympics is through my older sister Katrina. Mm-hmm. She was like the first one in the family to be involved. She has a disability, like I said. And she would always come home with these medals, these um ribbons, and they brought home a trophy one 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 month. And I'm like, hey, I want what you got. Give me what you got. And then, like, we can be best friends. I know we're sisters already, but you will be my best sister. Give me <laughs> what you got. And so she told me to go talk to uh, my former teacher, now, like, mentor, Kelly mm-hmm. Stevenson. And when I talked to Kelly, I first got involved with bowling. Let me tell you. I was really, a, like, bad sportsmanship. I had really bad sportsmanship. My leadership skills wasn't great because I'm still angry and stuff. Yeah, and- oh, yeah. And I would get mad every time I would go in the gutter. Like, I would throw a fit. Like, it would be insane. And so, yeah, that's how I got involved. <laughs> that's how I got involved. I love it. Hey, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> it's just everything in life. You just continue to grow and be better. So, I totally get it. Look where you are today. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so you know, I mentioned earlier, we, I mean, we kind of talked about people can just see how active you are, how busy you are. How do you especially now, how do you manage, you know, all the, the, the pieces of life that you're in with the Special Olympics, speaking with school? How do you, how do you, what do, what do you feel like, how do you balance those things in your life? Um, I can honestly say by prayer. I pray mm-hmm. constantly and I just ask God for directions and I go by this one scripture um, it's Jeremiah 29, 11, for, for I know the plans that I have for you, the plans to, are, plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, but plans to give you a future. And that's why I go by. That's how I manage it. I just ask God, I'm like, hey, where, like, what do you want me to do now? Like, what's the next step for me? Like, everyone's like, how do you manage it? Like, do you not get tired? I'm like, no, because God got me. I, I was like, when God get ready for my season to be over, that's when I will stop. That's when I will like throw in the flag and say, okay, I'm done. But until then, I'm here and I'm doing what he's called me to do. And I think that's what everyone, they, 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 they tend not to see about me that I say yes to everything because I feel like with me saying yes, I am putting my voice more out there and I'm still being an advocate for people with disabilities. And I'm showing them that to take on these leadership roles, to show the world that they're capable of doing everything that everyone else could do. Mm, that's that's I love that. That's that's the real plan. And we can we can really like we we can really have a planner and say we're gonna do this today at this time. And and we we try our best, but like I mean, amen to that. You know, that's that's the real planner. Know what needs to get done, and kind of letting that guide you, that strength, that kind of courage and faith to guide you. So I, I love that. That's that's that is a what they say facts, big facts. <laughs> right, right, right. Because most people say, oh yeah, well, I use a calendar. I use I use my Outlook. Me, I can't use none of that because I because then it gets me frustrated and I can't stay focused. But mm-hmm. if I just like allow God to just like allow me and push me to go where He needs me to go, then I'm good. I don't worry about things at all. I love that. I love that. I love it. And so, you know, one thing I want to touch on too is uh what does you know National Disability Independence Day, I believe is coming up. What does that day mean to you? It means to me that now we're looking at people with disabilities. Now, this is a time where we're celebrating people with disabilities because oftentimes we're not celebrated. Mm. We're not put out there enough. People don't believe in us. But with this day coming up, it gives them the opportunity to actually get to know us instead of getting to know our disabilities. Because mm. actually, oftentimes people are like, you have a disability or oh, you have this. I'm so sorry. Like, what are you sorry for? If I'm not sorry for myself, I don't need you feeling sorry for me. Right. And I believe when I think, think about Disabilities Day, I'm not thinking about our disabilities. I'm thinking about the person. I'm thinking about who we are and and what we have become. Mm. If people can stop throwing up and trash, oh, this, oh, this day is for Disabilities Person's Day. What is that? Why? Because I'm telling you, we celebrate it. We don't like... People with disabilities doesn't like to be have that day where it's like, oh, this today is about people with disabilities, and we're going to focus about them today. When we should really be focused on every day, just not just not on that certain day. Mm-hmm. I want people to realize that because it's super important that you start using 
these adults, these kids with, with disabilities, as you want to call it, because they, I'm telling you, us, we have the passion. We're passionate. We're like, you never see the, like, you never see a person with disabilities so down and out and ready to just like call it a quit. We're always going at it and we're always going for it. We, we never allow nothing to stop us. Yes, we might have our trials. We might have to go through obstacles to get to where we want to go. But guess what? We're going to do it and we're going to do it the right way. Mm, I love Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's cool. It is, you know, of course, it's, you know, admirable to have your own day and things like that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, the real groundwork is behind the support, you know, making sure that those opportunities are there, making sure that the support is there and things like that. So that's... I. I couldn't agree with you more, 100%. So I, I love that. Now, one thing, I'm getting ready to get to the last question, but one thing, we're donating 10 k to the Special Olympics Foundation. You know what I mean? The, that's the support piece to continue keeping it going. Just, you know, Special Olympics Foundation does amazing, beautiful things. It changes people's lives. It saves people's lives. It literally is is a, a, a game changer, life changer, but it, it just does yeah. a lot. And so as I mentioned that, I want to ask you one last thing. You kind of we kind of talked about it now too. What are some things that you feel like um, people or even us that like we could do to continue to raise awareness, not just raise awareness, but to continue to support the community? Kind of what you just touched on. What are some um, more direct ways you think that we can approach that? One, start giving us more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Don't reach out to the people that y'all usually reach out to. People don't reach out to just general ed people. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes people just want to reach out to people that doesn't have disabilities because they think they won't have like have an affluence or be that motivator when we're actually the motivators because mm -hmm. we're able to tell our testimony. We are able to share our story. We're able to share how impactful Special Olympics is. That's one. Two, start believing in us. Mm -hmm. when, when, when we know that we have people that believe in us and that's truly there for us, then we're able to succeed and do so much more. The last one, join us. Join us on our journey. Be there to see us go through these things. We would love to have everyone support us on different things that we go through in our life. And, and not just be there for small things. Because the big, so yes, yeah, small things matter, but big things matter as well. Like doing this. I, I'm so honored that I was able to sit here and just give and have this conversation with you. Many, this is what many athlete leaders want. This is what many young adults and advocates want for themselves. They want to be able to sit down and share their story with people. So yeah. That voice is so important. So I appreciate you even breaking that down because that voice is definitely important. You know what I mean? And actually, I'm, I'm gonna ask one last, I don't want to say this is my last question, but this will be my last, last question. Um, what do you feel like? Let's see, well, how, how can I word this? What is for you personally? What is next for yourself individually? I know you're going through school, and you know, like I said, you're very active. But what is like your next goal for you individually? And what is the what what is the next thing you want to do for the community for the for for the people like for people with disabilities? How do you want to? What is your goal there individually and as a whole for the community? So as for myself, I want to be able to sit on a board. I want to be able to sit on a shoe, like a like a shoe brand board, and be that chief inspirational officer, just like Loretta. That's my next thing for myself, and for people with disabilities, I want to open up a door for them myself. I want to make a home for them to go to to learn the things that they need to in order to succeed and make it in this world. Because my mom, she had a disability as well, mm -hmm. and everything I do, I do it for my mother. Because she wasn't able to do it. She would always cry to my mom, to my grandma. And she would always tell my grandma, why can't I be like everyone else? Why can't I have the same opportunity as everyone else? Why can't I learn as everyone else? It's because she didn't have the same thing I had when she was growing up. She didn't have the support. She didn't have nobody believe in her. But now I want to I wanna change that around for everyone with disabilities. I want to make it known that they will have someone that believes in them, that trusts in them, and that will be there to, to make their journey better. That's what I have for people with disabilities. One, I can see it. I can see it on the board. I can see, I can see you doing all these things. If you're not doing it already, I can see you on the board. I can already see you doing those things. Two, thank you 
for sharing your story. Thank you for joining us. And lastly, I know your mama's proud because you've Thank been you. you've gone leaps and bounds and you've done so much. And I could be really sentimental. I gotta watch this. I'm, I'm gonna cry. My girl, <laughs> I'm gonna cry too. But I love it because you know, I think, you know, when you look at it, you see how far you've gone and stuff like that. You also, you know, you know, you, we, it's hard to lose somebody that close, but the same right. time, your connection to God is even stronger, you know, right, it's right, right. there. So any prayer you got, if you were thinking you're getting hurt, she's going to make sure he, they get it that way. And I right. know you, you are killing it we spoke for this for this long and you already inspired me to, to do more one, to make sure I'm doing more, to make sure I'm going out of my way and making sure I'm being self-aware to support and at the same time, just to continue going forward. So like I said, you this in this short period of time, you already inspired me. So I can only imagine how much more inspiration you're going to give off in the future. And I just appreciate you joining. Thank you. And One remember, time. inclusion is the key. I love it. I'm not going to say no more. We're going to end it right there. We're going to end it right there. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. And we'll see y'all next time. Thank you again.